Oh, hey, yeah. We're going camping this weekend and we're boondocking, which means I need to fill up our fresh water tank. Let me put this down, sorry. Um, what happens is we fill up our fresh water tanks. You know, we fill them up with 100 gallons of water. We wait until we see it come out of the overflow. And so we know we're full. Then we get to our spot and now our panel is saying we're only two thirds full. Well, what happened? Where, where'd our water go? Why, is, there, is our panel wrong? No, what happens is we're going around corners and climbing hills and that water, our full tank is actually overflowing out of our overflow tubes and it's actually creating a vacuum and siphoning water out of our tank. So when we get to where we're going, we've probably already lost 20, 30 gallons. And the reason I know this is because I was coming around a sharp curve off an exit ramp and I saw it venting and splashing out the back. And I said, what is going on? And it turns out I was losing fresh water. So I don't know like how many gallons I lost, but I do know that uh, Friday night, Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, we actually ran out of water in the fresh water tank. So look at what we're gonna do. We're gonna fix that with a ball valve and a shark bite. Now we're, our, our overflow tubes that are coming out of the bottom of the trailer are PEX, or three quarter PEX pipe, P-E-X. So I'm gonna use in a shark bite, which is gonna slide right onto that, and a half inch PVC ball valve. So now after our tanks get full, we can turn off the ball valve and keep the water in the tank. Let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling the tanks while we put the valves on. I still use my pressure reducing valve, my water filter, and I've got a flow meter that I use when I start filling this tank up because it takes quite a while to fill this tank up and I don't wanna walk away doing something else. I wanna be able to periodically check and see how many gallons I've gone in the tank so I know when I'm getting close. So this is just a uh, flow meter that I got off Amazon. It's real handy, it's really neat. I like using it and I just put it in line. So I've got my Nautilus system set up for tank fill. I've got my hose on. Turn my valve on here. And our tanks are now filling. So these are the two components I had to purchase. This is a shark bite. It goes from three quarter pecs push on to a half inch MPT thread and then I've got a threaded half inch ball valve and I, I did put some thread tape on the threads it's not absolutely necessary we're not working under pressure we're just trying to keep from losing water so just spin that right into our ball valve and spin it on down a little bit doesn't have to be super tight I've got two overflow tubes so I had to build two valves so here's one of my overflow tubes that is right behind the rear axle. And we're just gonna slide that on. That was hard, wasn't it? Now our other one is actually in between the axles, so we gotta crawl under here a little further to get to that one. Okay, and we got our second one on, and this will get me by this weekend, but I'm actually gonna plumb this out further because this valve is hard to get to, and we have to be able to open and close that valve. So I'm gonna plumb this PEX you know, further back to where I can easily get to both valves, but for right now, this will get me by through the weekend. So while our tank is filling up, let's talk about some things that could go wrong with this setup. Where are we at? Yeah, we're almost 25 gallons already, but so when I get this thing full, I'm gonna turn those ball valves off until I get to location. It's important that when we get to location that we open those valves back up because if we run our water pump, what we're gonna do is if we start using water without opening those valves, there's no gonna be no vent and we could collapse the tank and probably lose water pressure and maybe even cause damage, I don't know. But we have to open those valves back up. We have to make that part of our setup checklist. Now. Another thing is we have to remember to open the valves. 
let's say we have them closed, we tow it back and we fill our fresh water tank without opening those. Now the air has nowhere to go. We, you know, we, that, that tank has to be able to vent. So now we have to have another checklist to make sure that those valves are open when we fill our fresh water tank because it could either blow up. I, I don't know, with the pressure reducing valve, maybe it'll, the, the tank will just expand and we, I don't want to think about what's going to happen. We just have to know when to open and close these valves. They're only closed during travel from point A to the boondocking location and then they stay open the rest of the time. I don't care if water leaks out when I'm <laughs> you know, driving back home or maybe if you're going between location to location you might want to shut them off but it's got to be part of your checklist. Don't just try to remember it. Make it part of the checklist. All right, so water's starting to come out the overflow so we know our tanks are full. So let me go shut the water off. And now I'm gonna actually drain a couple gallons extra. just to give me a little room inside the tank so that I'm not so full if the water warms up and get any expansion or anything. So I do want a little room in there. Okay, that should do it. And then I'll close both ball valves. Now with both ball valves closed, I don't have to worry about losing water driving down the road. I know my tanks will be full when we get to our boondocking locations. That's my solution to the problem. Hopefully it'll take care of it. We just got to remember to close the valves when we're driving and we have to remember to open them when we get to site and before we fill the tanks. That's extremely important to avoid damage. So thanks for watching.